Welcome to Digital Library Services. We have already seen in Module 2 in the history of Digital Library where we discuss the evolution of technology which started with invention of the first electronic computer that is ENIAC in 1946. Thereafter many computers like EDSAC, UNIVAC. Then the invention of internet by connecting four computers in four universities which gave birth to internet. Thereafter many services are offered over internet so computer, network, and internet has changed the domain of library for the dissemination of information to the users. Libraries from the four walls of a building moved out of its concept with its physical collection with the digital collections or converting their physical collection to digital collections, they are offering many digital library services. So in this module, we will discuss, deliberate, and impart knowledge on digital library services that are offered by digital library with or without human intervention. We'll also try to see some of the examples of such services and applications. As an introduction, the entire digital library services over the last few decades, where it was focused, let us see. First is that building of digital collection from the physical collections. Whatever is to be provided, to the user is to be converted as digital object. It could be an ebook, or it could be e-journal, or it could be any kind of electronic format content. Then the necessary infrastructure. So first is building digital collections. Second, building technical infrastructure. The technical infrastructure includes networks and telecommunication infrastructure, computing inf infrastructure, such as computer, printer, scanner, or barcode scanner, electronic gauge, uh, RFID equipments, everything including on this computing and infrastructure. Then large scale storage solutions like hard disk, XAN, storage area network, then access infrastructure for security purpose, that is electronic gate or biometric kind of security devices. Then on the collection, we should also keep for the identity of the document for copyright, so digital rights management. Then the standard and protocols, common standards and protocols to be followed then the metadata schema, that is the bibliographic information, or data about data. Metadata schema, which is required for defining this digital object. Then intuitive interfaces to support search and browsing. That means sophisticated or user-friendly interfaces. So digital sources and associated technical infrastructure is only a means to generate services, like printed sources are used in traditional libraries to generate surveys by the library staff. In traditional library, the help of library staff is available. But in digital sources, the services are generally given over web, and there may be minimum human interventions. So we are using web-based interfaces for this purpose. Earlier efforts for providing digital library services and concentrated on providing 
search browsing interface to its collection. So storage or preserving the digital data and giving an interface to search and browse. However, lot more services are added, providing access and browse and search to its resources only one of the several services offered by the traditional library. The other services, if we look at what is going on in a traditional library, which includes reference services, acquisition, that is the collection development, cataloging and classification for easy retrieval of information, then circulation of physical document, issue, return, reservation, everything comes under the scheme in an automated library. Then document delivery, the request come to library and the library provides the request and gives the document to the user directly. Interlibrary loan between the libraries. One library in an institute can request the content or physical book resources on a loan basis for a maybe 10 to 15 days time. So that is interlibrary loan and current awareness services, selective dissemination of information, SDI, bibliographic services, repographic services, these are the services generally we have seen in a traditional library. And some of the services has no relevance in digital environment, but others, many of the services which can be converted into digital form, and this can be put as digital repositories in the library, and user may be given the privilege to access it over network. Web-based digital resources can be potentially support a range of traditional and non-traditional library services. So when we are converting the library into web-based digital sources, many of them can support the traditional. And there could be more services which we cannot even offer in the traditional library. For simple example, digital book can be accessed at the same time by many users sitting in many locations. But if it is a physical book, it is restricted to only one user at a time. And computer programs through web interface with or without human intervention substitute the skilled professional for carrying out the intellectually demanding tasks like reference service, cataloging, indexing. Whatever may be the skill a library professional is having, but the skills are restricted because of the to the user on 20 by, 24 by 7. And the digital library discards this kind of barriers for giving 24 by 7 to its entire collection, simultaneous and, and seamless access. Libra librarian may not be responsible for the design and implementation of digital library infrastructure, because most of the components at the time of infrastructure development is done by the computer and live network experts or data storage expert. However, managers of the digital library, librarians are having more responsibility for creating the awareness of what is available in digital library. Creation of digital library content will not cater to the need of everybody if it is not known to the users. So that is one of the focused area which librarian should play in a digital library environment. And second is that he should also try to plan and design and try to invent the services, innovative services, that do not have a counterpart of manual, manual parlances. In uh, electronic, there are services which only can be done in the digital library concept. Now, let us see different services of digital library. Let us see from the picture some of the major services which are available in digital library. The first and foremost, if you look at any service in internet, that was email, the service more used when network was invented, when email was invented. Ray Tomlinson invented email. Since after, all our communications are centered over email. 
So the email alert service is something which is very unique in digital library from the traditional library. Any new book comes or new services are launched or if there is any program or awareness, we can send it through email alerts. So email alerts will go to every user at one time. Then digital reference services. There are a lot of reference material. So the normal, conventional, traditional reference service can be replaced with the digital reference service. Then a real-time digital reference service. That means the referenced material will be online and that, will, that can be passed on to the prospective user. Then latest technology, if you are looking, RSS feed and Atom. RSS feed and Atom are the technological name used for dissemination of information. RSS feed work like, RSS stands for really simple syndicate. I will come to this RSS feed later. But nowadays, if you look at most of the newspaper, newspaper service is one of the services library offer. Many of the uh, online newspaper has this facility of RSS feed. A user can subscribe to a feed. Automatically, when the feed get updated, the user will get it. It is something like pushing from the side of the server to the user. So uh, every time it will be told that, yes, this news is appearing. If you are subscribing to the RSS feed of latest happening in a newspaper, it will come as a ticker or it, a flash, flashing test in your browser or the feed reader so that we keep updated about that. This service can be used for many, many services in the library. RSS feed technology can be used even for a new arrival of book, or if somebody reviewed a book article, then feed can go to the people who subscribe to that. Then web-based reference aggregation. Many publishers will be publishing separately. And library can work as a catalyst catalyst for aggregating various services. So these aggregation services, examples I will show you later. Then web-based user education. You might have heard about Webinar or webcasting. Webinar is a code conferencing system. If a lecturing system that I can, I am giving a lecture, it is recorded now. Instead of that, on real time, I can go on Webinar and give this lecture. So that kind of education is possible. That means training program, tutorials can be provided through the web in a digital library environment. The other thing which we can give, other service which we can give to the user is that they can personalize their SDI services. These are electronic document delivery service can be over network. And uh, finally, Many times, if a librarian is not present or professionals are not present to interact with you, what is required is like ask an expert. Ask an expert means expert can be librarian or expert can be from various disciplines, but library can provide this service, part of the digital library services. So a physics professor is available. Anybody can ask questions related to physics in this service called ask an expert. And very customized, tailor-made services are also available, like Ask a Library. Any information which you want to contact library with a person which can be put through the digital library services. These are uh, the all services from this picture we are seeing. Now, quickly let us look for each services. Email alerts are also, the first service I mentioned is email alerts. Email alerts are also called email alert, a table of content alert, news alert, all this comes in email alert. So if a journal publisher provides small alerting service, when a new article is published in the respective domain, an email can go to the respective user. So the, once we have to configure it, after configuration, the user will automatically get this kind of alerts. And this alert also broadly be equated to the current awareness service. This was the traditional service library was offering. So the same current awareness service can be replaced with email alert, or maybe it can be fine-tuned with email alert for better user, better, better usage. 
the first one first time a user is supposed to create his user profile login and password for this once it is created automatically it will come and there is provision for any user to unsubscribe if you are getting so many mails or subscription every day frequency of this update can be managed in digital service i will tell that i need the all alert at one time in a week so that that i can get it in all the alerts in one time and then go through it so it depends on the user whether he has to select a title subject area or whatever regular intervals he was regular intervals he need to receive this one and type of email alerts as you can see from the picture the type of email alerts includes table of content alert enhanced alert new issue alerts citation alerts publication alerts ebook series alert i first alert database alert reference work alert and search alerts there could be more alerts coming but these are the very common thing which we have noticed while preparing the document then digital reference service where this was done by personal assistants in library so imparting routine instructions on mech mechanism of using a library a reference librarian in contrast to the normal traditional librarian is also involved in del delivering reference service that de uh, require deep intellectual understanding of a subject so librarian digital librarian is not a postman the job of postman is to get the letter without looking into the content and pass it on the user but a digital librarian adds its intellectual content whether this is used or this article is having an impact factor that means the rating of the article or the author is known all this a digital librarian can add to the concept of while giving the information so that's why a little intellectual input is added by digital librarian when he provides the services and automated libraries are not yet sufficiently advanced or to offer interactive reference service so electronically mediated reference services are increasingly available through libraries and information center digital service variable is called web based reference service so this digital drs digital reference service also is called web based reference service and these are the internet based question and answer wherein libraries are or voluntary organizations offer reference service to the users typically through email or via web and the reference digital reference service required network of experts and an intermediate distributor in a different institution in case of voluntary organization offering digital services people who serve as digital reference expert are called volunteers or mentors who are most of the time information specialist affiliate to various libraries so in foreign countries these posts are very imminent and many people volunteer this job or mentor from the expert field to give in reference services and a librarian may not be expert in all subject so the subject expert will work as a volunteer or mentor the service connect user with individual who possess a specialized skill and subject knowledge in conducting precision search most of the services are have web based question submission or email addresses and there is something called question point services as an example for drs i request you that visit the website called www dot question point dot org is a subscription based service from oclc oclc please recollect that is the one of the world's highest cataloging manager or content subject voiced information provider oclc so all this is from oclc by including many librarians with a network of reference librarians in the united states and around the world offer digital reference services and the question post on cost point question point may be answered online by qualified library staff 
from the patrons on library or may forward to the participation libraries. If they don't have an answer, they will forward to the respective library. And FAQs are also prepared by them for questions. Then real-time di digital reference service. This, is, this work like a chat room. I am sure that you are all chatting when you are on using internet services. Anytime you might have chatted with somebody. Now the same chat room can be used as a subject one-stop point for discussion of various subjects. So real time it happens. Uh, even I do offer service in chat rooms. In particular time, I may announce it that uh, 3 to 4 o'clock I am available. So you can come and ask me any questions which are related to the domain or subject area where I am involved in. And this is like a real time system. So chat software, live interactive communication software, counter management software, web contact software, interactive customer assistance system, that is example is live person, L-I-V-E-P-E-R-S-O-N, live, live person, AOL, A -O -L, which provides a lot of services in the internet, AOL instant man messenger, conference room, recently, not recently, but Google introduced the service called Google Talk or Google Hangout. MSN Messenger, Skype, Webnair, all this comes into the category of real-time digital reference service when focused into a particular subject. While digital reference service is asynchronous method of information delivery, the internet chat providing the benefit of synchronized, synchronous communication. The difference between classroom teaching and a recorded speech is that the faculty is not available when it is recorded when you have a query when you are reading the material or listening to the material. But in the context of digital library, which works in synchronous mode, the faculty can be made available to interact with the experts. So this also is part of uh, between a user and a reference librarian or a mentor part of this. Then a few other examples include some of the very famous universities that is Cornell University. They have Internet Public Library, Michigan State University, North Carolina University. All these are offering internet chat-based services. I think uh, colleges and universities should look to provide it. And uh, the students watching this video, when you graduate and you are in a library, the chat, etc., is to be used not for time killing, but also for very important subject-wise the reference service where you, ca you can get involved. Then live rough, it is from public.istate.edu, Cyberstack, maintains an online registry of such services. So if you want to get the digital reference services of all, list together in a site, this is a site, live rough, search for live rough, www.public.latest.edu slash cyberstacks slash liverough.html. Then web feedback, web feeds and RSS feeds, which I already told, RSS stands for Real Simple Syndication or Rich Site Summary. The summary of the complete news appeared can come in one line to the user. So that's why it's called syndication, Real Simple Syndication, RSS stands for, and Atom. This facilitates a website publisher generally to list the new, newest published updates like table of content, new article list through technology called XML. RSS use an XML format and they provide this RSS feed in XML and the feed reader will read it. If you subscribe to the feed, you get it automatically. So web user to keep track of new update or chosen website and uh, this is available. Generally, this is predefined, but content is dynamic. That I, I subscribe to generally science articles or semantic web article. So whenever an article is published, that comes into my feeder. So in order to use this feed, you have to download any feeder, RSS feed reader, or then subscribe to the feeds by copying the link. All the newspaper you can see there is a link providing website 
that, that can be cut and paste into your subscriber. Once you subscribe, it automatically it will come. So subscription is like here. Like we subscribe to a newspaper. Then every day newsboy come and throw the paper to you. you your job is to take it and read. So similarly, one, once you subscribe to the feed, then feed will send, to, uh, data, uh, send the data to the computer every time. And digital libraries of most of the public library provide this service. If you have maintained digital library, RSS feed is part of it. Atom is part of it. Delivering and RSS feeds on websites are typically represented by rectangle with a letter XML or RXL. You will see kind of a, a orange tag with a, two lines uh, if it is providing RSS. It says kind of icon shows that uh, yes, our site provides user. And Influminate also has this RSS feed. If you come to Influminate website, see right side you have something orange, a kind of uh, signal, Wi Fi signal, but color is different. Now, we have this RSS feed for new uh, journal published, uh, new, any news in uh, uh, Influminate happening. If Seoul has an update, or uh, Shodganga, if uh, the, we are some milestone we are closing, or uh, for the training program and calendar, you can subscribe to this so you get it whenever we announce it. The other one, another is that aggregator service. So we have seen email alert, we have seen RSS feeds. Now, reference aggregator service on web means that it's an aggregated collections of reference work from different publishers put together with a common search. And browse interface has the great advantage that whole collection of material can be searched at once. What does it mean? You must be knowing many publishers, Springer, example, Taylor and Francis. JSTOR. All this provides various disciplines, articles, and publications. Now, somebody is working in physics, he has to go to all sites separately to get uh, what is available in physics or chemistry or computer science, library science. So the respective people has to go to different. Instead of that, we, what we can do, we can aggregate the services of one subject together and put it. Like one example, the Gale Group and H.W. Wilson were only a pioneer in providing this kind of web-based reference aggregators. Oxford University Press has re launched recently Oxford Reference Online, ORO. That, that is called XREF, refer. Oxford ka X is taken and refer, XREFER. And the site address is www.xrefer.com, which provide access to about 28,87,964 entries from 256 titles from 55 publishers. It means the aggregation of 55 various publishers are aggregated into one XRefer service by Oxford University Press. Now, reference. Engineeringvillage2.org. That is from, that provides something called reference. On the other hand, it's a collection of 156 handbooks in engineering from Evil Village platform. Similarly, Magro Hill and Digital Library Lab DEL provides online access to selection of more than 4,000 engineering articles, and that is from 150 reference classics. Now we have seen three services. The fourth one is web-based education, user education. It provides high degree of interactivity and flexibility to the user, offering them benefit of self-space, teach them from basic to highly advanced level, designed in a wide, wide range of formats to accommodate diverse learning styles. Web technology provides for incorporating both synchronous and asynchronous interactivity. So a recorded one is asynchronous, the other one is synchronous. So proliferation of digital resources has generated greater demand on reference and instructional services. At any time, 
requirement of instructional reference service has, if you are looking at digital at the resources, it is grown everywhere. Some of the website that can use web-based user education is, we can use it in the following area. Basic library skills, along with the glossary of library terms, using library opaque, web opaque, locating books, magazines, and other theses and other library material, instruction on subject searching training using Boolean operators, searching internet process through search engines, instruction for searching CD-ROMs, web-based databases, etc. And personalization, that is selective dissemination of information, SDI, in digital library. Personalization in digital library facilitates filtering of information with an aim to provide personalized and enriched experience to the user. It plays an important role in tapering the information gap between huge amount of information available in digital library and task-specific tailor-made information for individual. If you look at the definition of personalization, the way a user is tailor-made to match unique and specific needs of an individual. This goal is achieved by adapting presentation, content, services based on person's task, background, history, device, information needs, location, etc. So this model is generally user-centric model, personalization. This includes recommender system, collaborative filtering, role-based personalization, and middleware to support portal and personalization. Examples, recommender system, which I mentioned just now. It's a type of implementation of personalization that are designed to learn about individual's requirement. Then proactivity, identify and recommend information that means those requirements. Amazon has implemented a recommender system now for their clients, which suggests the book which he may be interested to purchase by other client with the same or similar. Uh, Amazon is, may not be having, day before yesterday, I, I ordered a book through Amazon, but the book comes from a very near, near bookshop which was maintaining almost one collection of books. So they, they work as a recommender system. And in personalizing, collaborative filtering is also available. It's a method of making automatic predictions about interest of a user by collecting preferences or taste of information from many users. 100 users in the same discipline is surveyed and get their taste, what they are interested to go. Then that is what is called collaborative filtering. The underlying assumption of the collaborative filtering approach is that if a person A has the same opinion as a person B on an issue, A is more likely to have B's opinion on different issues and to have an opinion on X of person chosen randomly. That means if many people are having similar approach, their opinion also may be same. For example, a collaborative filtering recommendation system for television taste could make prediction about which a television show a user should like given a partial list of the user's taste, likes and dislikes. So this kind of personalization on, or collaborative filtering is there for personalization. You can read more on this from Wikipedia. There is a wiki collaborative filtering and see the image in Wikipedia that shows example of predicting of the user of rating collaborating. It's very interesting to watch the picture. Uh, it, since it is available in Wikipedia, I'm not showing it here. The middleware are computer program for personalization. Connect the software component and application of the client user. This is a little technology based. Application programming interface, that is API, is a middleware component that facilitate transferring of messages between client and server based protocol. Middleware can be used effectively by librarians to interface and integrate between monolithic and digital library. Theoretically, it looks a little technical, but I give you an example. Books.google.com is a service offered by Google on its digital book collections. And if you ask for an API, the same API you can use it in your website. API application program interface. It's a program code. 
you can download it. It is developed by the person, uh, uh, the Google itself, for searching the books. So I have to customize. If I am interested only in some particular library science book, I can take the API code, modify for library science book, put it in my website. So when people click on it, it will only show library science book of books.google.com from the Google. So this is what is an example of API. Now role-based personalization. Role-based means categorization and classification of user based on the interest or their interest. You have to see user profile and role in the application domain, then make this kind of personalization, role-based. Uh, it should be noted that personalized information retrieval and access should be a process of adaptation where application providing personalized information based on dynamically and automatically dictating of an information seeker's behavior and situation. So this is this depends on a lot of component like uh, how a user seek information, what is the behavior of it, etc. Uh, generally, this is done in the business or e marketing industry. Two elements that determine functionalities are desired personalized system. User profile including navigation in history, user preferences, user profile should include all the information relevant to the user, including personal information, and navigational history, and behavior record. You, you must be knowing that when you are browsing Google, Google stores cookies. The cookies is actually your habit, whichever website you are going. Let us say that you are going to a particular product all the time, maybe purchasing of your fancy item clothes. So whenever new cloth is introduced, you get an advertisement specifically that, yes, this cloth is now. Or you are very fond of watches, electronic watches or smart watches. So your behavior is taught, then when you open the browser, it will show that new smart watches or the very popular smart watches which you are looking for. So this kind of user behavior based personalization. So different terminologies such as personal profile, my profile, user profile, my setting, all are kind of used by various digital resources. Now let us see example in our area, Science Direct. For example, my setting is there in Science Direct. A user is generally required to create a personal profile or a personal login with username and password where he or ma'am Specify journal, subject area, frequency of email alert. Then you get it. Whenever uh, Science Direct introduces, you get it. And uh, at the end of it, I will suggest, uh, some, uh, give two more examples. One is electronic document delivery service. We are subscribing to electronic resources. Many of the electronic journals are priced. Once you subscribe it, you can subscribe it from the sources where it is available. Now let us say that you have a consortium based subscription. And if you don't have the journal which you are looking for, you can request it to somebody else. Now libraries had been using fax machine for delivery of photocopies in past. It, it can go through telephone line as a fax or you can send it as a copy by post, physical post. Now electronic document delivery is like you are scanning the document. Again, depending upon the copyright issues, you have to check it. But fair copy is possible. One, one or two pages you want to scan, or chapter scan and send it. So maturity of scanning equipment and technology, this service has started in library. So document electronic document library service is some of the services which electronically a user is given his demanded information. And a software package known as Arial is used in several libraries for this purpose. So special made software is available for, for these services. That is, Arial is one example. And developed country, you can get delivery of scanned articles via internet by using Arial. Arial software is also loaded on an internet enabled computer, can receive and send electronic information. Adonis system developed in 1980s is a document delivery system based on bitmapped page images. Uh, some of the enabling factors contributing 
well-established electronic, commercially availability of most peer-reviewed journal, inexpensive technology, most electronic publishers and aggregate like Elsevier, Springer, Wiley, Taylor and Francis, EBSCO, they are offering full text of article at a cost ranging from between 30 to 45 through their website. That means you can buy it. I should say that it is kind of buying tech. Different vendors have various payment options also. Pay for three and get five. Some publisher give it. So all this, what, what you get is an electronic documentary. You get the article by mail. Then finally, ask an expert. This is a service which in digital library very common. The expert will be pooled and they will be given a time slot. Some of the services, libraries, they charge for it. So it could be fee-based, question answering. You ask a question, you get it, you pay for it. And nowadays, this is uh, all this, no, you can sell it. I, I was in France recently, and I found that a poet is there for sale. So he has write a poet for sale. You give a theme, he will write a poem for you. This is what is that service. So an ex why, if you are an expert, why don't you charge it? So you, you can even charge it, sit as an expert for one hour, and charge for it. This is all available. Some of the sites which gives experts is Ask Jeeves. Ask Jeeves. www.askjeeves.com. Info, please. Internet Public Library. That is IPL.org. All expert. That is, I'm not telling www every time. All expert. All experts.com. Askrefer.com from Xrefer. Ask iPhone a hyphen librarian.org or UK. Ask doc, Dr. Intern, that is nwfusion.com slash columnist slash bus. And Yahoo directory, ask an expert. Uh, just to Google, uh, go to the Yahoo homepage and ask her. Directory, ask an expert. So these are some of the examples of it. So in summary, we have seen email alert, digital electronic delivery, ask an expert, RSS feeds, all these part digital library services. So before concluding, I would like to tell that library has benefited immensely out of the digital collections. There is a question that whether the library will exist as it exists today once digital library is in place, though hypothetical question. But the way libraries are moving is you will see 90% digital collection in future and with less human intervention, the technology will play as the mediator between the user and the library collections. And with this, I wish you all the best to use all the digital library services and please make use of it. And thank you.